again, Robert Earl at the Eco Ranch. Today we're going to work on solar panels. We're going to move on from wind turbines to solar panels. That's where 90% of our power comes from, is the solar panels. Uh, I've just installed a row of them here, and now it's time to wire them. Uh, for wiring, I'm using one wire for one solar panel, and it runs all the way inside. I'll show you the inside in a few minutes. Got number eight wire here, and I'll probably get emails or, or comments that this is overkill. I don't need this. I can wire two or three together. Yeah, you can. I didn't want any loss. I felt like spending the money on uh, overkill. I'd rather have too much than wish I had just a little bit more, and men, you know what I'm talking about. So, we're going to wire the um, solar panels, uh, and first of all, we're going to start with one. This panel here, you can see over my shoulder, it still has the original cables, uh, plugs attached. Now, I understand that if you cut these plugs off, you void your warranty, so you don't want to cut the plugs off. Uh, I cut them off because I'm not going to return anything. It's more expensive for me to return something than it is to buy another one. So what I've done is I keep cutting them off, but I only cut off every other one. So one will be cut off, and then one will use the cut ends and wire the, um, the wires to, the, to that. So that's what's going to happen here. First step, though, for me is to run the wires. The wires have to go up. In this case, they're going up and through the, ra uh, the, the rafters. I'm going to run about 20 feet, and I'm not going to make you suffer through that, but um, uh, you run the wires up out of the way. Keeping in mind that sometime you might have to get there and service the wires, so you want to be sure you've left yourself plenty of room. And if you can see above my head here, I didn't leave myself plenty of room. I can't even get my head through that gap, let alone these, these shoulders of mine. So uh, don't you make the same mistake. Anyway, uh, we're going to move on to... Um, Pulling the, wires, um, pulling the wires through, and I'm starting, what you do with the wire, well, the easiest way to do this is to run both wires at once, that way you're not running them twice, and take the wire, start at one end or the other, uncut, don't measure and cut, because you always end up with like that much that you cut off, and you do that 20 times and you've got enough to run another length of wire. So leave the wires intact, run from one end to the other, doesn't matter which, Connect that in, pull it tight, leave a little bit for expansion, contraction, or you to move with, um, and then cut it again. And we'll show you that in a few minutes. in the power room on the fuse panels. We're about to uh, wire that one panel that we're working on into the box. Now, as I said before, why, leave one end on the spool, or rather, leave the wire on the spool. Don't cut it. Run it all the way through. That way you can have extra, like I have here. I've got extra in the red and the black. The black goes to the top where, uh, if this, this is a normal electric box that I'm using as a combiner, and it's a, it, a combiner does just exactly that, it combines. In this case, it's this one here is going to take five and combine them into one wire that comes out the bottom here. This red wire here that I'm pointing at is a combined wire that drops down to the charge controller uh, the amp meter, which in this case, this one here is uh, defective, and I sent it back and then down into my bus bar. So, we've hooked up the negative. The negative goes to what would be the neutral line um, if this were a regular electrical system. And, of course, the neutral line would be the white wire. Now, we're putting red and black, so there's no confusion. And we put the, white, the red wire into the circuit itself. Hopefully, it won't pop back out there, screw down, now just a quick word about circuits, I wanted to finish this video today, so I'm using this circuit that I have that's an old circuit that I had bought a long time ago, it's a double circuit, it's a square D clone, these are made in Mexico and they don't fit a square D box quite right. Uh, but I, I did want to finish the video and, and get the, at least these two up since I had started them. So we're going to use these. I've ordered new uh, Square D home line fuses to, or circuits to fit in. It almost fits perfectly, but not quite. And neaten up your wires, make them look good. Now I've got them off. there while I was talking that um, needed to be worked out. The, the Square D type type 
clone fuses that I bought came out of Mexico and they weren't commissioned by Square D so they don't quite have the tolerances of Square D. Bottom line is the one side is not working on either one of these. So even though they're double fuses, they're only single fuses, I've got new fuses coming like I said but I'm going to go ahead and use this to finish up with. So I just took and, and uh, put a second one in, wired this, the existing panel, it's already completely connected and then this one right here is the one that we're wiring today. The positive and the um, negative are connected. We're going to go outside and finish connecting up the uh, panel. We'll come in and check them. And then All right, now we're back out at the panel. And um, we've got our wires here. They're hooked up. We, I've pulled them through from the other end so that, there's, so that uh, all the slack's been taken out. And we're going to go ahead and cut them. We're cutting so there's no waste. We haven't lost any wire because we've got exactly what we need here. Strip them. Be careful not to touch the two together. There are uh, what makes your solar panels run is there's a couple of one-way diodes. And if people don't know what a diode is, always think of electricity. Whoops, there goes my wire. Always think about electricity as you would water. Um, so, a diode is simply a valve that allows the electricity to flow one way but not the other. Or a, a one-way diode, a blocking diode. Uh, a lot like if you have a water faucet that uh, uh, had a one-way in it also. And if you, connect, if you touch these two together for very long, you'll end up blowing the blocking diode out. And, and what can happen, depending on how you've wired your system, is at night, all your electricity from your battery can flow back up uh, into the solar panel and discharge. Now, my system, that's not critical because they have, and I don't know what the hell a MOSFET is. It sounds like a little, a little furry creature uh, in, the, in the Alps somewhere. But um, it's got double MOSFETs in there that control the power in the uh, charge controller. And they actually uh, block the power in their own way. They act as if they were blocking diodes but they're not blocking diodes, they, they do something entirely different. So, okay, here we are. Okay, so I'm ready to do one of two things here, either fall on my head or connect up the solar panel. And we've already cut the wire to the correct length, but I forgot which was positive, which is negative from the solar panel. And this is an old panel, so the paper tags they gave me have worn off. So how do I check it? Well, I've got my meter up here, and I just connect the meter up one way. Do I get a reading? No. So that means it's backwards. Hook it up that way. I got a reading. Open circuit 19.66 on an overcast day. That means that this one hooked up to the red wire is my positive, and the other one's my negative. So, put the meter over here, go over to my positive, get a wire nut, Put it in my third hand, which some people call a mouth. Come over here and connect the wire nut. So the warranty on this panel would be intact because I haven't cut the plugs off. And I'm putting a wire nut on the other end of, the, of a, a plug that I put on. Okay, now that's on and that would be okay for a lot of people, but tension gets put on these wires and it could pull them apart. So I took a wire tie out, a plastic wire tie, and they're cheap. If you don't have them, uh, make sure you get them. Get them because you can use them for a million things around the house. I put it about a half inch down from the connection I've made. And to make it look neat, you cut it off. And just like a shampoo bottle, it says lather, rinse, repeat. Connect, cut, repeat. Last wire nut. Again, these are my gray wire nuts that I've mentioned in another video that um, uh, are exactly the same as red. So if you were doing this with number eight wire on your solar panels, you would want to be buying reds. Unless you ran into the same guy I ran into that was selling 10,000 gray ones that are the same size as reds. I'm having a little trouble here. 
uh, and you sometimes do. Sometimes it goes smooth, sometimes it doesn't. Just having a little trouble lining the wires up, putting the wire tie on, and then getting it started screwing on. Sometimes it moves. You always want to check that, and I checked it on the other one without saying so. After you're done, you always want to check it by just pulling lightly on both of them. We know it's in place, we know it's right now. We're going to put the wire tie around it to secure it. And when I finally finish this project, we'll straighten all these wires up that are hanging a little bit. They'll still look like spaghetti when you look up in there, but they won't be hanging down in your face. Cut that off. We're ready to go inside and test to be sure we have voltage and that the fuse works because Hecho in Mexico sometimes means El Crapo from South okay, last work. step. Yeah. Now, you, now you can see me, I think. There we go. Last step. We're going to make sure the fuse, uh, the circuit works and the circuit is complete. Now we hooked up the other one. I'm going to hold this. Hopefully you can see it. 1334, that's uh, the voltage here uh, connecting to the main bus bar, but not going through the inverters and the batteries, which act like capacitors, and they lower it. It's actually 1283. I'm looking at a meter down there. 1334 with it off. Now, we should get somewhere around 19 up here. 1958, and when I flip this up, it should drop to the 13. 1332, we've completed the installation. It's safe, it's fine. If something happens where we go over that 15 um, uh, amps, it'll break. And those two panels are hooked up. That's 240, um, 280 more watts that the system is getting, which is important on a cloudy day. We don't get many cloudy days, but when we do, we get about eight of them in a row, and this is like number four, so our power has been suffering. So anyway, I'm going to finish this system up, um, or fin finish up the installation of all the other uh, solar panels. I think I've got four left to install once I get uh, the proper circuits. But at least we've done this. You have an idea how it's done. Uh, and again, any questions, give me a call. Call, call your suppliers. Um, they, they're always happy to help. Doesn't matter who they are, they're happy to help. So um, that's all for now.